Trying to put together 10 games that were the best on the Nintendo Switch were very difficult for me, but I think I've been able to put together 10 I feel truly deserve the top 10 spots with a few honorable mentions and just a bit of rules. So real quick, I'm not going to be having any games that weren't built or launched on the Nintendo Switch first or a dual launch. So certain ports that came over, those will not be on the top 10 list. Not that they're not good enough to be in the top 10, I just feel that if they launched originally then were brought over later, they can stay off of this list since they were originally on a different platform. Now let's go ahead and get into the honorable mentions then the top 10. So for my honorable mentions, Fire Emblem Warriors 3 Hopes, Monster Hunter Rise plus Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, Platoon 2, and Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. All of these games have cool dynamic gameplay, lots of content, things to do, online multiplayer with Splatoon 2 is fantastic, Monster Hunter Rise is really good. There's so much stuff that these games do and they almost made it into my top 10 list. Now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into number 10. Shin Megami Tensei 5 from Atlas in 2021. Now this game just sneaked into the top 10 and the reason why is that it's one of the best looking games on the Nintendo Switch, especially going from the Nintendo 3DS to the Switch. That was quite the jump for the SMT franchise and it obviously paid off with the Unreal Engine 4. The gameplay is also probably the best thing about this game. It's solid SMT Mega 10 press turn system where you can just exploit your enemy. But you also have to be very wary about yourself because the enemies can also exploit you and can really just wipe your party out in a hurry. And this game is just punishing, especially on the hard difficulty where once your party is wiped, man, there is no auto saving. You could lose a lot of progress. So it's kind of old school in its nature, which I did like that about the game. The demon fusion is better than ever. And a lot of the plot that's intertwined with actually completing the side quest and everything and doing all the different demon fusions and getting stuff is really cool, especially with the secret ending at the end. And of course, it wouldn't be a Mega 10 game without the incredible music. And that's part of the reason why I kept playing and playing and playing was the music was just awesome as well. So at number 10 is Shin Megami Tensei 5 from Atlas. Number 9, Pokemon Legends Arceus. This game, it was kind of once again kind of teetering with some of the other games that I have on the list, but I ended up putting it on here because of its innovative gameplay. I love what they did. They did a nice mix, not too much into the action, but just enough to really get the creative juices flowing when it comes to what they can do in the future. But just speaking on this game itself, I loved the hiding in the bushes and throwing the Pokeball and kind of doing different things that way with the gameplay, the strong style and the speed style. It changed up so much with the usual Pokemon formula. Also with the traversal in the open-ended areas, having a different Pokemon that you can switch to at any point and kind of fly around or go on the ground or go in the water was just like an instant and a breeze and it just flowed and gelled. You combine that with the stealth aspects and all the other new aspects that they added into the game, Pokemon Legends Arceus was the most innovative game that I've seen in the Pokemon franchise for like decades at this point. So I had to get it, especially with that banging soundtrack and the great gameplay. Obviously the graphics necessarily not the best, but it more than makes up for it. And that's why it's number nine on my list. Number eight, Fire Emblem Three Houses Nintendo 2019. Now this game has like a triple threat of awesomeness to it. The music is some of the best that I've ever heard. The story is absolutely epic and that's probably what makes this game really tick is the hype story and the multiple different paths and just the sorrow, the range of emotions, the happiness that you feel kind of hearing all these different stories and interacting with all these characters. But it's not just that. The gameplay is peak top-notch strategy RPG. From the battalions to the different combat arts to the weapons to the leveling, everything in this game gameplay-wise just really gives you more like a creative canvas to really upgrade and free flow the way that you want to with your characters, what you want to build up. Now, and it can be unforgiving on the higher difficulty levels and of course the classic is back where if your unit dies they're done forever so i think that gameplay wise everything is solved there obviously the graphics aren't the best in all areas 
But once again, just like Pokemon Legends, it more than makes up for it with its other things like the music, the story, and the gameplay, which is exactly the reason why Fire Emblem Three Houses makes it number eight on my list. Number seven, Metroid Dread, Nintendo and Mercury Steam 2021. This game is pretty much near perfect in my eyes. And some of you guys might be wondering, well, why isn't it higher on the list? And the only reason why it's not is just because all the other games above here are also really good too. Once again, it was hard to pick, especially numerically ranked, but Metroid Dread, phenomenal graphics, phenomenal gameplay, phenomenal sound design, phenomenal bosses. The only thing that's kind of eh, not so great was the music. I mean, it wasn't bad, but it just wasn't really that amazing compared to some of these other games that are above it. But everything else is really good. It is a little bit on the shorter side, but that doesn't really hurt it too much when you have great replay value. And everything else is just so expertly crafted in this game. I really enjoyed the ending of it. No spoilers here, but that was one of the best, if not the best endings for a Metroid game of all time. And it's right there with Super Metroid. I think it might even be my favorite Metroid game of all time. And that's talking about all the different Metroid games. So Metroid Dread is completely deserving of a higher spot, but it's going to have to settle for number seven on my list. Number six, Triangle Strategy from Square Enix 2022. This game, once again, very similar to Metroid Dread, has so many things going for it. it. Has a phenomenal art style and graphics. I love the HD 2D. The story is incredible. It might have the best story, individual story, out of any game on this list. And I'm pretty much gonna say, yeah, I'm confident with saying that because the story in the game is just absolutely incredible with triangle strategy the gameplay is superb one of the most innovative and i would say best strategy rpgs with the kudos based system which is why i gave it a little bit of a nod over fire emblem three houses and on top of that this game has one of the best quality of life features ever i would say the most hype best quality of life feature that i have ever seen in a strategy rpg and that's the encampment where anytime in between chapters based on how the game was built, where a lot of these story scenes are pretty short. There's a lot of talking, but they kind of break them up. And then in between, you can go into your encampment, you can level up, you can fight different bosses, you can research, you can upgrade. There's all sorts of things that you can do and you can access that even before main story missions. So if you're not strong enough, you don't have to worry about it even right before you're about to fight and then you can head back into your fight. So that is a quality of life feature along with all the other things where Triangle Strategy had to make it to number six on my list. Number five, Super Mario Odyssey, Nintendo 2017. Yes, Super Mario Odyssey, an older game on this list, but still one of the best and my favorite modern edge 3D platformer. There's so many great things to say about this game, especially launching in the first year of the Switch. The graphics are incredible. The frame rate held up extremely well. The world size was really good. It gave me a nice little mix of a lot of different Mario games, but also had its own creative edge and unique gameplay spin to it. The music was fantastic as well. I can't really find many things wrong with Super Mario Odyssey. I'm just not into platformers as much as the next person, but Super Mario Odyssey was a blast and a game that I played for a number of hours, even afterwards, which I usually play a Super Mario game, at least with the most recent ones, and just kind of put it down. This was a game that I actually went back to a number of times, like Super Mario Galaxy 1 and Super Mario Galaxy 2, which are my favorite Mario 3D Mario platformers of all time. So Super Mario Odyssey is right there with them. And once again, I don't really have much negative to say about the game. It really is an incredible experience. I loved it from when they first started advertising it all the way through, and it deserves the title as the best selling 3D Mario game of all time. And that's why it's number five on my list. Number four, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 plus Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Torna the Golden Country. Now, this is interesting because I'm including the DLC, which is an extra separate game. But for some people, they downloaded it through Xenoblade Chronicles, so you would need that to access it. So it's kind of weird. It's DLC and an expansion for a game, but it's also a standalone. But I feel that together, it's much more stronger in terms of its position on here than apart, which is why I put it up 
so high. I mean, I love the Xenoblade Chronicles franchise, but I feel that Xenoblade Chronicles overall as a whole, if you add up all the parts, would be like number one on my list. But since we're separating it, at least with this type of way, it gets the number four, but it's definitely worth it. You guys know I'm a huge Xenoblade fan, one of my favorite RPGs of all time because of its mind-blowing story. When you connect Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition or Xenoblade Chronicles 1, there's tons of content in this game, and it has one of the most unique battle systems out there for an action RPG, and the music is just top-notch exquisite. Xenoblade Chronicles is so many different things kind of all put into one, and it's interesting because Xenoblade Chronicles 3 launching this year how will it stack up? And then something tells me that it's gonna stack up even a lot better compared to the previous games. But for right now, with what Torna did and the gameplay improvements and what they did in that game combined with Xenoblade Chronicles 2, this game had to make it to number four overall on my top 10 Nintendo Switch games. Number three, Astral Chain, Nintendo 2019, and of course, Platinum Games. And this game probably has for an action RPG one of the most creative and inventive RPG battle mechanics out there because it's very unique. People don't necessarily see it as an RPG. I had a number of people tell me it's not an action RPG, but it definitely is. You control your own character and you fight with that character. You can level up that character. You can transform, have different types of weapons with that character. And then the legions that you're connected to that you control, but also auto battle as well, they are essentially your different party members that you can switch on the fly or you can even unchain them bring out another one so there's a total of three on the screen at any time and if you have like a cpu fighting with you or something like that but usually it's you with your legion and each different legion has a different class so you have like a warrior class or like a thief or an assassin type of class that's faster you have a tank class you have a range or archer there's different types of classes but they did it in such a unique way an interesting platinum way people didn't even notice but that's essentially what it is the game was originally going to be more of like a magic user action rpg where you're shooting magic and stuff like that nintendo actually got them to steer course into this and i think that it was a phenomenal idea because the game turned out to be one of the best rpgs that i have ever played but the art style is hype the gameplay is innovative and hype the graphics are incredible the music is insane so to me the only small thing in terms of a blemish on this game for me at least is the story is kind of a bit cliche maybe a bit predictable but it's still fun to go through especially with all the content that you get and the extra stuff that you can do this game is complete on cartridge no extra downloads or dlc or anything else needed and that's exactly the reason why astral chain makes it to number three on my list number two super smash brothers ultimate nintendo 2018 and of course the master himself soda bandai namco with it and this is the best crossover game that i have ever played it's the most epic crossover game that i have ever played and it's perfected platform fighting they've been doing this sakurai nintendo for a very long time and it really shows with this the fact that they were able to make this type of game is probably something no other developer could do or no other developer wants to do with this many characters having to get their mannerisms, their weapons, to get everything to fit into how Smash Brothers works is just a gargantuan task and really there's not many people that can do this. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate deserves that type of credit and praise because there just really isn't anything else like Super Smash Brothers at this scale. Anything else that we've gotten is at a much smaller scale. So the roster, the stages, the music, the gameplay, the features, Super Smash Brothers is top notch. The only blemish for me is the fact that the online play is not necessarily the best with the netcode, but if you're playing offline with the friends or if you're at the tournaments and playing, or even if you find somebody else that has a good internet connection, you guys can play. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate is definitely the best playing Smash Brothers game of all time for me. So that's exactly the reason why I have this game, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, at number two on the list. And number one, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Yes, the first game released for the Nintendo Switch or earliest out of all these games is still the best in my eyes. 
The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild not only represents Nintendo coming to a new age with their system, but the most impressive thing for me is the innovative gameplay and the Sheikah Slate. Still to this day, we are seeing crazy gamers out there do things that you could have not even thought was possible in The Legend of Zelda. So whenever you start seeing crazy stuff, you can just like look at it and be like, wow, I didn't even know you could do that. That's the type of system that they built in The Legend of Zelda that just oozes creativity. There's multiple different ways to solve puzzles, kill enemies, traverse the land, do different things. I mean, it was insane the amount of creativity gamers have in this. And I think that's what makes The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild so great. It's not like it's a follow-up or a sequel to what we've gotten before. It almost feels like it's a reinvention from what we got back in the day with the original Legend of Zelda, which kind of turns off some Zelda fans. But for me, I loved it because that's how I fell in love with The Legend of Zelda in the first place, was the original game and that type of freedom without having restrictions on where you have to go and what you have to do and what enemies you have to fight and all of this. So that's what makes Legend of Zelda so great. The open world is very creative. Like I said, multiple different ways to actually get things done. I love what they did. The DLC is phenomenal as well. It still looks really good despite it being a Wii U port, but it did dual launch. So that's the reason why I have it on my list here. So Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which I still go back to and play to this day and find out new things is number one on the list for everything that I mentioned. But what are your top 10 Nintendo Switch games of all time and what are you looking forward to? What do you think can surpass some of the games that you have in your list? Let me know in the comment section below. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video here. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you're someone new, click that notification bell, and we will see you for the next video. Peace.